Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. So first of all, just wanted to say I uh, hope everybody had a nice New Year's. And for the first video of the New Year's, I um, thought I'd do a plant tag video. So Jerry from Planting Memories tagged me in a uh, plant 2020 tag and um, he did the video like on the last day of 2020 so I haven't got around to doing it until today. So it's only a few days in and as my first video I thought it'd be a nice video to look back on 2020 um, with all the carnivorous plants that I've got so I only started doing my videos for I think it was around 2020 just before um, then and um, since then obviously my greenhouse and my collection has progressed a lot and it's just been really nice doing the video so for all those people who have been watching even from the start or people just enjoy my videos so thank you very much for that and I thought I'd just do, um, I, I want to do the plant tag as well to give it a carnivorous plant twist so Jerry did his mainly on like house plants and these tags are mainly house plant related but I like to give mine a carnivorous plant spin obviously because <laughs> mine is carnivorous plant um, you know passion and I thought I would do the 10 questions he added one on to the end so there's 10 questions to study the original nine and I thought it'd be nice to show plants that I've got uh, in answer to the questions so obviously lots of plants are in dormancy so even though I could probably show you the pots they were not really much to show no color and a lot of them are empty pots but I'll put pictures over the video the whole way through so you'll be able to see what the plants look like and other plants as well that um, you might not know that I own or anything because they're indoors so it's just been a nice video to do okay so I'm gonna start with the questions now so the first question is what is the first plant that I brought in 2020 so I had to look back for this one because I couldn't really remember I brought so many plants this year and the first plant well I brought it as in gamier I brought which was the pinguicula grandiflora gamier and um, they have all grown lovely, of course like I said I will continue putting pictures over there, the ones that are currently outside in my bulk barrels. I also brought seeds of those um, at the same time and all the seedlings have entered their first year of dormancy so if you can see the little green specks that are in here, these are all their hibernacula so this is their first year in dormancy and I've got loads of those now and they're really lovely plants to keep and as well as that at the same time I brought a load of Drosera gamiae such as the Scorpiodes. These I sowed in February but I brought them just before it took them a while to come but they are some lovely plants so I mainly brought Gamier at the start of the year and the first like proper plant purchase that I did was the Linda Butt so this is the first Saracenia that I brought for the year which is my Saracenia Linda Butt which currently only looks like this but it's a really really beautiful plant and there's three um, rhizomes in here so another one that desperately needs repotting and dividing up as well so hopefully I might keep that as a plant because I haven't decided yet um, okay so second question plant I shouldn't have got but I got anyway um, I mean a lot of plants I would say are impulse buys I um, now I'm more focusing on getting named plants but before that a lot of stuff was impulse buys like I like um, going around on eBay and stuff and bidding on stuff and um, just getting some new plants but I'd probably say um, in regards to plants that I couldn't I didn't really expect much and I kind of regretted buying was the Drosa Adelaide so um, it's a tropical species but I'm gonna, I keep outside here because to be honest it looks better than it did when I got it um, I don't know if I've got any pictures they um, I might have to go and search for them but I wasn't really sure about buying from a seller and I'm guessing a lot of people have made the same mistake in the past where you kind of want a plant and you buy it anyway despite not having high hopes and you kind of um, when you receive it your hopes are really confirmed really like <laughs> it's not as good as you thought but you still got it anyway and that's how I've answered that question but the plant did really well eventually like when I got it it looked completely dead um, but I know obviously Adelaide are a really good plant they just spread like crazy hence why I'm keeping it in the greenhouse um, they're more of a tropical plant that you keep indoors all year round but they kind of act a little bit like capensis or alicia if you keep them in the greenhouse where they'll die down to the roots and come back because of just how much they spread and how easy they are to care for but when I received it it was completely brown all over the roots looked a bit mushy and I planted it up anyway I actually kept like just chucking it in different pots because it didn't do anything and then one day I got two little plants come out from the roots in the pot and 
since then they did really good but this time of year it does just look like that but that is a plant that um, I kind of wanted for a while because um, it reminded me a little bit of my Drota Regia um, with the wider longer leaves and more heavily dewed so that's why I got it but I never really wanted it the first place hence why it doesn't look that great and I haven't really included it in many videos but all the same it's a nice plant if it does come back at the same time I'm not really fussed um, if it does I haven't really got attached to it okay next question a plant that I have rescued the one that I would say was my biggest rescue was a Nepenthes Gaia and um, I got that from a garden centre and it looked terrible if I could find any pictures when I got it um, they had sprayed it with I think some fertiliser or something like obviously you don't want to fertilise your plants but they had um, done like a massive um, spray on all of their plants and it had gone all over their coniferous plants and it looked really bad and since then it's grown really well actually if I can find some pictures um, then I'll show you I'm not a fan of the pemphies I don't know how many people know that about me I don't really like them it's weird considering they're a nice coniferous plant and I know they're very popular in collectors but I've never really warmed up to them. There was a stage where I really wanted one, but I never got one. And since getting a rescue, even though I like it, I wouldn't say I'm attached to it at all, really. Um, it's getting quite big now as well. I don't really have the space for it indoors. But it's a plant that I'm not going to um, kill. I know the gayers are reasonably um, expensive, not like super expensive, but they are a nice one to have, and especially finding them in garden centres was really nice. But I'll put some pictures over. It's a lovely plant just can't say that it's my favourite. Uh, carrying on from the plants I've rescued, I thought I'd also just note like most of my typical fly traps, a lot of them I have got as rescues like in pound discount sales as well. Um, I don't do that as much anymore, um, it was kind of a thing that I did like at the start of the hobby um, once I really got into it and I brought multiple plants and like rehab rehabilitated them, <laughs> can't say that word. Um, and a little bit like the plants are, are in my bunny bog. So these are seven, nearly eight years old. They'll be eight years old in February from when I first purchased them. So before that, they were probably like two or three years old as well. But um, they're looking really nice despite dormancy. And these ones I got, again, from just the garden centre. And um, ever since they kind of showed their true colours and all that, I picked up a few different ones in the sales just to... Um, you know, revive them and all that. I've done it with Drosera as well, like I've got um, Drosera Bonata from garden centres and Drosera Paradoxa as well. Both lovely plants and they've just been nice too. I kind of enjoy, I did enjoy um, making them look a lot better than they were before and you know, keeping them in my collection. There is obviously certain ones that I didn't really come across to but it was nice to, you know, rehabilitate them. Um, and make them look good, have them in my collection, even if there wasn't something that I was going to hold on to. Okay, so next question, plant I successfully propagate. I have propagated practically all of the genus of um, carnivorous plants that I currently own. Um, I'd say the one that I was most happy about was the Cephalotus. Um, I took, um, I did a video on it previously, taking leaf pullings from Cephalotus and I did it the year previous as well before doing that video and I got one success out of that which that plant now is grown up and it's really nice so it's even only about a year or so old and the plant is doing really well now it's growing really well um, considering what it was before I did include it in that video and showed the previous success and the um, ones I did take in that video have all started to grow now so I will put a video um, or put a picture over the top to show you the success of those so far so I'm really happy that I got that I think that's one of my most successful like ones I've been happy about propagating but um, Drosa leaf um, cuttings I've did loads of those this year and they all come up they're looking amazing as well um, like I said I'll try and find pictures of all these um, but yeah so most of the stuff is propagated and there's certain things that I'm really happy about um, uh, Venus fly trout flower stalk propagation so I've got one here which was the one I've, I've only got one success this year I did kind of neglect the other ones that I did of the cultivars but as you can see there is the flower stalk and that is the little baby that has come up from the bottom so I did get luckily some success out of that but that's another thing that I have enjoyed doing so it's just experimenting really with different 
propagation methods is kind of what I love the most about the horticultural sector and obviously applying it to the hobby of coniferous plants as well. Um, so the next one is um, interesting, what plants have I killed? I haven't announced it yet but everybody's going to have to find out. My cephalotus, which is was one of my favourite plants um, because of the colour that it was, it was so dark, it looked a little bit like the Eden black cultivar. Um, again, lovely plant, hopefully I'll put a picture nice here. Um, love the plant and <clears throat> I only had it for about two years but it was my fault why it died. It um, got it got really cold this winter, so this winter's been really cold. I keep mine outside in the greenhouse. It did fine in the greenhouse the first year, but I kept it drier, where the temperature um, this year kind of went from really warm to just really cold in the second. And cephalotus don't like being really sopping wet as it is, and the cold came in quickly and it rotted like that. But saying that I'm not overly as disappointed if I hadn't taken all those leaf pullings because they're clones of the original plant so they will eventually have the same coloration unfortunately they obviously are going to take a while to grow but I'm glad I did them like my first thought was when that plant I lost that plant I was so happy that I'd taken all those leaf pullings because you know that's why I've got more plus I've recently purchased a new cephalotus as well um, don't know what kind of color at the moment they're just green because they haven't got the full impact from the sunlight being in winter as well and I thought it would be nice just to have a new one see if I got different like colors see if they'll be as dark as before or if it will be a lot lighter but I'm glad I've got another one it is a bit of a shame about the other one yet yeah, like I said because I did the propagations of it I'm really happy that obviously it hasn't completely gone at all. Okay, next question, what plants have I grown from seed? Again, practically all of my plants I um, have at least grown them from seed once. So I've grown Pinguicula from seed, Drosera, Saracenia, Flytraps, I've done loads of stuff from seed. Um, this year mainly I did um, some Saracenia seed sowing of my own crosses, so I pollinated and harvested my own Saracenia seeds as well as my own flytrap seeds and Drosera. I sowed Anglica and Rotundifolia seeds which all came up and they're looking lovely as well as like Philiformis and other stuff. So yeah, I've grown a lot of plants from seed and those plants have done really well as well, especially Drosera, they grow really quickly so they're just nice and joyful to grow from seeds but this year mainly I have been sowing Saracenia seed. Okay, so the next question is um, the most underrated plant. So I was thinking hard about how to answer this one because there's different approaches that I could have taken on this one. I decided to go for um, the approach of um, more underrated in the sense of appreciating, I guess, its beauty and its subtlety plus ease. So I went for the Drosicofensis um, purely because as um, hobbyists, especially in collectors, they are known as weeds and granted I have over 300 now because they just spread every year I try and cut off the flowers as soon as possible now um, and they propagate everywhere but it was the first plant that I ever got into this st which started me in this collection so um, I got a Drosicopensis as my first carnivorous plant and I don't think I would ever um, don't I don't think I would ever not have one in my collection um, granted I do need to shift a few but um, I guess I, it's a kind of a value thing as well to me, so I've got here, which looks terrible, um, one of my oldest um, Drosicopensis, so this here is a seven year old um, Drosicopensis, which was um, of, off my original, so it's not my original, my original unfortunately died a couple of years ago, um, which is the plant I named Dewdrop, um, and that one shortly came just like a couple of months or so after I first purchased that plant and it came up from the root system so they had like a twin and I've still got that twin now but unfortunately like I said the original one did die off but I think they're underrated in the sense they're very very beautiful plants and they're very easy to care for so I would say they're a really nice like beginner plant and they're underrated in the sense of even though um, they're beautiful and they're a nice plant to keep not everybody likes them due to being a weed but then at the same time like I said they're a really beautiful plant and I think that a lot of people should have them in the collection. Carrying on from the most underrated plants I think another one that I just thought of was Venus flytrap cultivars. So there's a lot of cultivars now that have um, been developed 
and they're getting more wacky. So obviously you've got the wacky traps, you've got the pom poms, the freaky star, um, and even a fused tooth. So I've got a fused tooth, and this is it. It's looking quite good. So it's actually an example that I can show. I'll probably get a better picture of it though. So the traps it produces in the height of the growing season are completely fused like this, and then their winter leaves go a little bit more normal with uh, less fuse on them. Um, even though it's a really beautiful plant, it's got some lovely coloration, I really like the compact shape of it as well. Um, cultivars which have extreme traits like that, or have like extreme um, properties, I'm not as taken to. So there's ones that um, look very, very um, wacky, <laughs> with like the wacky traps and the like, where the um, traps either cannot function or they are like completely different, half of them like don't even look like um, fly traps anymore, that they've been so mut um, mutated so much. And I think that's another underrated plant. So I can say to myself, I'm using it as an example that um, my, me, myself, underrate those kind of plants because they're a bit of mix and match between hobbyists. So some people really like them and some people really don't, but it depends on the cultivar because I really like um, the flanks, which it just looks like a normal, but obviously has the elongated lashes as well. So it's just a bit of a um, love-hate relationship with those. And I think that's another plant that's a bit underrated. Um, question eight, um, most challenging plant. Um, I was thinking of that, and I think the answer I've got for that is the Drosophyllum. I can't necessarily use it as an example because I've never properly grown it from plant. I've sown seeds, which I did last year, I think, and I did get one success and it started growing, but I think my level of worry over, because they're known to be quite challenging plants with their different conditions, they're like a bit drier than obviously um, most carnivorous plants are bog plants, these can um, tolerate damper conditions and really need a aerated soil because they're prone to root rot. And I had one germinate and I kind of panicked and I didn't know if to keep it wet, to keep it dry, and <clears throat> unfortunately I did lose it because obviously of my over caring um, for it. So even though it's not a plant, it's more like a seedling that I um, killed but I am trying again this year. I think that was a really challenging plant because of the worry behind it. <clears throat> but I think um, a plant that I've got is the Helium Flora. So I actually own one of those. I got it about three years ago and it will be almost three years in February that I got that. And I wouldn't say it's challenging in the fact that it's hard to keep alive. It's the fact that um, I can't really get it to grow, and that's why I've never mentioned it before. So I'll put a picture over, but the I've had it for about three years now, and it stayed roughly the same size. I got it as a really small seedling, and it has barely grown since that. I keep it under lights indoors in my propagator. And it did really well at first, and then it kind of went for a phase, and then since then it never really grew properly after that so I'm probably doing something wrong but I haven't really because I haven't been attached to it I haven't really wondered why it's not growing and I haven't really done anything to it to make it grow any different okay so question nine is what is my most valuable plant and I was thinking in terms of cost at first so I was thinking of like expense value and I do have a couple of Saracenias uh, like a little bit like the Saracenia Flava Adrian Slax Maxima really beautiful plant um, not so hard to get hold of anymore so it doesn't really necessarily have like a high value rate and there's like a couple of other Saracenia that I've got in here which are really beautiful and are valued in many collections especially to me they have a good like sentimental value um, but I think that's what I'm going to go for as approach to this question is the one that has the most value to me and it's got to be um, the Drosa Regia. So this is what it currently looks like. It um, is going through a little bit of a winter stage at the moment. I've decided to keep it out here this year um, and it will eventually lose its leaves and come back from the roots. They're really good at growing through roots. I took some root cuttings last year but unfortunately it didn't work. I was hoping to maybe this year but I haven't decided yet. But this plant has done really well for me. I got it only two I think years ago and because um, last year I had it inside because I was worried about killing it. This year I've decided to um, risk it and keep it out here. It's doing really well still. And um, when I brought it, it said it was sown in 2016. I brought it, I think, in 2019. So it was already about three years old when I got it. And it's just a plant that I'd always wanted. It's always been on my wish list. And when I got it, 
it's just been amazing it's grown really well and i'm just so happy that i've got one and it's always been a plant that i've said that um if it ever died i would go straight back out there and find one another one is though they are quite i guess valuable as well because you don't really see them much for sale it's a rare opportunity that i found that one and um for quite a good price as well so i'm really happy that i did eventually get one and i'd say that's my most valuable plant and final question, which was the question that um, Jerry added on top, and I thought it was a really nice question, is top wish list plant for 2021. So this year, which I said at the end of last year, the um, aim for me is to change my greenhouse a bit and keep the plants that only I want in the collection, and that is focusing mainly on Saratinia. So I'll still keep and probably collect Drosera and Flytrap still, as well as like other plants, but I won't be collecting them in bigger quantities of Saracenia. I want to focus on my Saracenia collection, maybe my Drosera as well because I've started getting back into Drosera again. This winter I have collected a lot of pygmy sundews and I just love them so much so um but yeah top wish list plant definitely Saracenias so one that's been on my wish list for ages is the Saracenia Adrian Slack which is the Morii one and that one um I hopefully I'm going to get, I have been speaking to a friend on Instagram and he said he would put one to one side for me as well as a Saracenia Night Sky. So I'm really happy that I'm hopefully going to get those soon so that'll be a great day for me because I've been looking forward to getting Adrian Slack for ages, one of those ones that again is quite expensive and they're hard to get hold of um, and they're really nice to have in the collection. But that's what I want to focus on but my main one I'd probably say is um, the Saracenia Lacophila Hurricane Creek. So or in the Saracenia Lacophila alba. Any Lacophila has the really nice pure um, white um, is definitely one that I would love in my collection but again hard to get hold of and expensive peer and <clears throat> as well as that obviously the money issue don't necessarily want to be spending loads but at the same time I would happily um, if I found one of those pay for that as well even if it's a tiny one because I've, that's another plant I would love so any I guess Saracenia like that um, named um, Saracenia is what I'm looking for this year mainly um, so like Saracenia Asbo as well that's another great one to have in the collection but it's just named Saracenia really like I, anything that you know it's a nice collector's item is what I'm currently looking for this year so that's what I'd say top wish list plant is the Saracenia Hurricane Creek um, but if you're talking about <laughs> top genus then yeah Saracenia definitely Okay, so that is the end of all 10 questions that was asked. Um, so thank you very much to Jerry for tagging me in this video. It was really nice to do and to look back as well on 2020 and all the plants because especially during the growing season, as I've got a lot of plants and they're all just bundled together, it's hard to pick out certain ones. So these questions definitely um, you know, help me think about all the plants that I've got now and picking out those ones that really mean a lot or plants that haven't done as well. So yeah, it's been really nice to do this video and I hope everybody has enjoyed watching it. So, as I haven't said it before, I um, hope everybody um, had a new year, so happy new year to everyone else. And thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day.